Uh, you, you mentioned earlier that uh, Helen Erland was uh, one of the discoverers of uh, well, Erland syndrome. Um, now, how, how was it actually discovered? Uh, the problem was actually discovered uh, by a remedial reading teacher in New Zealand in 1972. And uh, she had had children. She was finding it very difficult to help them with their reading. So she asked them what made it so difficult. And this uh, remedial teacher, whose name was Olive Mears, uh, published a little paper where she reported what the children said about how it's not fair the way they print books with all that black and all that white. It's just not fair, they said. And so she quizzed them about that and discovered the things that I've just reported to you. Um, now, we did know that these were problems before because uh, an American named uh, Dale Jordan had published a book called Dyslexia in the Classroom and he had listed all these kinds of symptoms as being difficulties for children with dyslexia. But nobody knew what to do about it uh, until uh, at the University of uh, California, of uh, Southern California, a, a clinical psychologist was hired by the university to find out why there was a significant number of students who could not pass their basic English uh, qualifying test, but they could do their subjects at university quite well. They were obviously clever, but they couldn't pass the English component. And that was Helen Erlen. And so she was able to ask these intelligent adults, what is it that makes reading so difficult for you? And then she got all these answers and they began to tell her how uh, it was better if they had sunglasses or it was better if they had yellow paper or old books with with faded paper uh, where the print was not so dark and so on and so through exploring this she discovered that if you used appropriate color filtering which was individual for every one person uh, then you could uh, ameliorate or even get rid of this problem altogether for those people. Obviously there's a little bit of a debate about whether this condition is, is actually a, a real one or not. What can you tell us about that? Yes, you can understand why people would debate that because putting coloured lenses on somebody's eyes just seems too simple to cure such a difficult condition. Um, but in fact there is now a great deal of research <coughs> quite apart from the um, uh, anecdotal evidence of people who've used these lenses, there is a great deal of research now showing what the effects are and how they are improved by these lenses. And uh, those effects, those uh, research papers uh, go from psych psychological research papers to optometric research papers to biochemical research papers. Uh, and we do know a very great deal now about how this works. And uh, there's still some debate about why it works. But, for example, we can show brain scans uh, showing how the brain works in a dyslexic person who hasn't had this treatment. And we know from that, uh, those brain scans that those dyslexic brains are working four to five times as hard as a normal reader's brain. And yet reading isn't working for them. <clears throat> then when we put the lenses on them, we can show that the amount of brain energy being used is much less but it's now working. The brain, the right areas of the brain are working and the person can now uh, achieve results with their reading. Okay, fantastic. Paul, thank you very much for your time today. If you're looking for more information on this or any other literacy condition, please visit our website at readhelp.com.au. Thanks for your time.